Hello and welcome to Eastern Roman History. Succeeding to the throne at the age of 16, in 685, Justinian II, named by his father, Constantine, after their illustrious predecessor, Justinian the Great, ultimately would never live up to his father's expectations, despite his efforts. Justinian II, who ruled from 685 to 695, immediately launched an offensive against the Caliphate. In 686, Justinian sent the Anatolicon Strategos Leontius, the future emperor, to deal with the Arabian forces commanded by Ibn al-Zubayr. Leontius' victory placed pro-Roman princes in charge of Armenia and Iberia, and even raided into Albania and Azerbaijan, amassing much loot. These actions frightened the caliph, Abd al-Malik, who was in the grips of civil war, to reconfirm the treaty he had struck with Constantine IV, paying 1,000 solidi, one horse and one slave, to the empire every day. He also agreed to share the revenues from Cyprus, Armenia and Iberia with the Roman state. Justinian agreed to transfer the Mardiites to Roman territory, which removed a considerable fawn in the Umayyad side. 12,000 Mardiites settled in the remaining Roman territory in the Peloponnese, Cephalonia and Nicopolis, one of the Roman enclaves in Epirus. A large portion was settled in the Carabisianoi Strategia in southwestern Anatolia as sailors. In 686 to 687, Justinian reformed the Carabisianoi, dividing the province in two, so the new Strategia of Hellas, with its capital at Corinth, was separate from the Aegean Islands and Anatolia, which was the new Carabisian Strategia. The Drungary of Kibereats based at Kibera, was also established as a small, subordinate territory of the Carabisianoi. Having secured peace in the east, Justinian transferred the Fermatic cavalry from Asia Minor to Therma Thrace in 687 to 688. Personally leading the army himself, Justinian, in 689, smashed through the Bulgars and Slavic Sclavonia in Thrace. Justinian reached Thessalonica, having taken thousands of prisoners and driven the Bulgars out and established imperial control over a corridor between Thessalonica and Constantinople. This episode demonstrates how little control the Romans had in the Balkans. Much of their European territory here was confined to pockets around city centres such as Constantinople, Thessalonica and Athens. Over 100,000 Slavs were transferred over to Bithynia and Cappadocia in the Opsikion Strategia. They were granted land and a five-year tax exemption. 30,000 were drafted into the army. Constantine VII reports that Scythians were resettled in eastern Macedonia. On his return from Thessalonica, the Bulgars ambushed Justinian's army, inflicting heavy losses. However, Justinian managed to come out of this unscathed. In 689, Justinian likely launched another attack on the Caliphate, reaching Mount Amnus. Abd al-Malik made peace. He reduced his tribute from daily to weekly payments, but conceded authority over Cyprus, Iberia and Armenia to Justinian, and allowed the emperor to remove 6,500 more Mardiites and resettled them as sailors in the Hellas Strategia. In 691, Justinian transferred a portion of the population of Cyprus and resettled them in Cyzicus, founding a new city called Justiniopolis, and made the Bishop of Cyprus also Bishop of Cyzicus. In 692 to 693, Justinian launched an invasion of Mesopotamia to take advantage of the weakened state of the Caliphate, as well as breakdown of relations due to the coins being paid in tribute. Abd al-Malik gathered his forces and met Justinian's army. At the Battle of Sebastopolis, the Arabs, who at the beginning were losing the battle, won victory because the hastily conscripted Slavs that Justinian had in his army, some 30,000, 
called by Theophanes the Chosen People, and, as Nikephorus calls them, the Peculiar People, two-thirds of which switch sides and join the Arabs leading to a crushing Roman defeat. Theophanes claims that Justinian massacred most of the remaining Slavs in his army along with their wives and children. The rest were sold into slavery. Justinian then imprisoned Leontius, who Justinian may have blamed for the defeat. The 20,000 deserters were resettled in Syria and proved invaluable in future Arab raids. Despite this devastating defeat and poor outcome, the overall transfer of massive numbers of Slavs to Anatolia helped enormously in revitalizing the massively underpopulated empire. This fact is repeated again and again in the sources, something that would not have been mentioned had it not had some significance. Justinian maintained the religious policy of his father, Constantine IV, and seems to have been a pious man. At least, this formed part of his propaganda, with coin legends or with Servus Christi minted on them. Justinian II was the first emperor to mint a portrait of Christ on his coins. This may have been an attempt to match Abd al-Malik's issue of coins with religious inscriptions such as there is no god but God, and Muhammad is the messenger of God. This is called the Shahada, one of the Islamic declarations of faith. Here is an example of the Shahada and the Caliph on the other side of the coin. Theophanes reports that these dinars had been the coins the Caliph had been paying the Byzantines as tribute, which likely angered Justinian. In 692, Justinian called the Quinisex Council. Its purpose was to go over the canons of the 5th and 6th Ecumenical Councils, hence the name, and establish many new canons that might be needed. The most significant decision of the council were the canons that dealt with the differences in practice between the See of Rome and Constantinople. For instance, the marriage of priests was allowed, which was the practice under Constantinople, but not in Rome. The canon that caused the most controversy was the affirmation that the See of Rome and Constantinople were equal and superior to Alexandria, Antioch and Jerusalem. Pope Sergius I condemned the entire council, seeing it as not ecumenical. Just like his grandfather, Constans II, Justinian II in 693 ordered the Protos Patharios, Zacharias, to Rome to arrest the Pope and return with him to Constantinople, but the troops of Rome and Ravenna opposed this. The imperial officer escaped the Roman mob only through the aid of Pope Sergius himself. This was a significant humiliation for Justinian. Also, in 692, the Dome of the Rock was built. In 693, Armenia was retaken by the Arabs. Justinian followed up with another assault, but again met with disaster. Peace between the Caliph and Emperor ended with renewed raids against Anatolia in 694. To pay for Justinian's constant campaigns, Justinian employed two right-hand men, the treasurer, the Scalarius Stephen the Persian, and chief finance minister, the general Logothete Theodotus the Abbot, raising taxes and pressing the aristocracy for money. Theodotus was ruthlessly efficient in his collection of taxes, bringing the Justinianic regime much ire. It was also during this period that the old Roman senatorial aristocracy started to disappear completely. Justinian, in 693 to 694, built a new dining hall at the imperial palace and enclosed the area. He built a courtyard for imperial ceremonies in Constantinople on the site of a church and rebuilt the church elsewhere. All of this proved expensive, and Theodotus and Stephen had to increase taxes yet again. In 695, the Arabs pillaged Armenia Hexopolis. To try and boost his plummeting popularity, Justinian II released Leontius and made him Strategos of Hellas, possibly to both show his clemency and remove an enemy from the capital as this difficult command would fully occupy Leontius. 
Leontius, however, conspired against Justinian before he left. In a well-organised coup which had the support of Justinian's political enemies, the Senate, the Blue Deem, the Army, the Palatine Guard, the Patriarch and the city mob seized and mutilated Justinian, cutting off his nose and slitting his tongue. They exiled him to Cherson following the practice set by Valentine when he deposed Heraklonos and Martina. The Emperor's chief subordinates, the Sicalarios, Stephen, and the Logothete Theodotus were both burned alive in the Forum of the Ox. Judith Heron sees Justinian II's first reign as being relatively successful, whereas Warren Treadgold's conclusion for Justinian II's first reign is far more negative and sums up why the line of Heraclius was deposed. Treadgold, A History of the Byzantine State and Society, page 337. The circumstances of Justinian's deposition suggest that the Empire lacked the resources for aggressive expansion let alone for a return to the glories of the first Justinian. At the least, making sustained conquests at this time would have required great caution. Justinian II, despite his initial successes, had made too many enemies, spent too much money, taken too many chances, and failed to see how much the 7th century invasions had weakened the empire. In the end, his projects weakened it further. I have been your host, Daniel Maynard, and this has been Eastern Roman History.